Hi guys, um, to, today I wanted to talk about uh, being an enabler. Um, so uh, there was a situation that happened at the community centre yesterday um, and uh, I thought, oh my goodness, this would be uh, perfect to do a video on surrounding enabling. Um, so the situation was, right, uh, there was a couple, um, they came into the community centre, they needed some assistance with food and they were also homeless. Uh, the woman was uh, very pregnant um, and the man had just come out of prison. Uh, so they were both lacking in that family support and things like that as well and they seemed quite upset. There might have been some underlying things going on there. Anyway, so I assisted them with food uh, and then... Uh, went to refer them to some organizations that could potentially help them with accommodation uh, and because I didn't bring my lists in yesterday I was lacking in um, the information so I had to get one of the other lists um, so we had to print it out so I handed out one of the lists and then um, went to come back with the second one the woman became quite annoyed uh, was quite rude started getting quite abusive towards me um, and I became a little bit invested in running off to really get that list quite quickly, even though I was the one doing the helping, right? So I went off, grabbed the list, came back, gave it to them and was like, oh my goodness, that woman was really rude. And all I was trying to do was help them because I was concerned that they wouldn't have a place to sleep tonight, you know? Um, and they were going to head to another place after to get some assistance with accommodation. But I thought, well, they'll, they'll just give the same information, probably less than what I gave. Um, anyway, so uh, the list was found uh, crumped up on the chair um, and they didn't take it, right? They only took, I think, one list. Um, and I thought to myself, oh, I was really angry. I thought, oh, you know, these people clearly don't want help and made me like think, oh, well, you know, why bother? You know, why am I doing all this extra work? And then I thought, do you know what? That's the 1%. The 1% don't want help. The rest of people don't want to be sleeping on the street tonight. They will access the numbers and things like that. They will access the support. Uh, and it's about providing people access to that information, right? So now think about that situation. If, for instance, that was someone who you loved, would you chase them with the list? Would you then, even though they refuse to access their, the help themselves, they refuse to do those things themselves, would you then say, oh, no, come and stay with me, even though they're displaying toxic or risky behaviors, they're in a bad position, they could potentially bring you down. Um, you know, what What types of behaviors do you think or actions or choices would you make if that was someone who you really cared about, if it was a friend, if it was your partner, if it was uh, your child? Um, and now if we display different types of behaviors when it comes to addiction, um, mental health, uh, anything that, that that displays, I guess, behaviors that people aren't really doing very well, um, maybe even some toxic behaviors and that type of thing. Should we then uh, go extra to try and help them even though they don't really want the help? You know, they're not going out of their way to help themselves, but yet because we feel quite strongly towards these people, we're making exceptions, you know, we're making exceptions. Um, so anyway, I wanted to, um, <clears throat> I've got a bit of a list here, like as per usual. Uh, so is the situation different when we have feelings there? Um, so when we're providing support, uh, what is it, Kaylee? No, hop out of it, please. Okay. Um, when we're providing support in the way of access, uh, we just need to provide them, like I said, access to information. Um, so we can't make people read the list, you know? If it was a loved one, we'd probably more, be more inclined to make them read the list, you know, we'd be like, Ugh, put it in your mouth, you're keeping it with you for always, you know? <laughs> we want them to really soak in that information because we care about them so much. When it's a stranger, it's kind of different. We're like, okay, all right, fine, it's your problem, deal with it then. You know, when you're sleeping on a rock tonight, maybe you'll be thinking, oh, should have taken that list. You know, maybe they won't. It's their choice. You know, uh, we're only creating resentment and damage to the relationship by chasing these people and trying to make them make good choices. Even though we can see it from an outsider's perspective, we don't have feelings attached to their situations because we're not living them. You know, we, we do when it's someone we care about, you know, it's different, right? Um, 
<clears throat> so I've got a list here, how to know that you're an enabler. Um, so number one, ignoring potentially dangerous behavior. Uh, number two, you put their needs before your own. Uh, number three, you have a hard time expressing your emotions to people. Number four, you make too many excuses for your loved ones. Number five, you make choices out of fear instead of reason. Number six, are you blaming yourself for their actions? Number seven, you financially support your loved one and their addictions or mental health conditions. Uh, number eight, you lie to cover up their dangerous behavior at the expense of yourself. Number nine, you continue to endure your loved one's uh, addiction or toxic behavior, even though it's ruining both your lives. And number 10, you resent your loved one due to their addiction or toxic behavior. And that can often happen uh, when you try to help and nobody listens, or that other person is, is not ready to listen, or you've been enabling them so long they're used to that behavior, so they just expect someone to save them. You know, you, you're, you're actually feeling like, well, screw them. You know, I'm no longer a doormat. And you'll usually lash out in passive aggressive behavior and then feel guilty for it later. Um, so how, how can we help ourselves? Well, obviously we can assert ourselves. We can place some boundaries in, in <clears throat> sorry, in the relationship. We can um, still let them know that the door is open. Always leave the door open so that they can access the support of us or friends and family and provide them, like I said, access to services that can help them. Um, so do some research and education around whatever it is that your loved one or um, is struggling with or person, maybe acquaintance, but I wouldn't really go into too much effort if it's someone who you don't know. Um, okay, so how to stop enabling your loved ones. Uh, so don't clean up their messes. <clears throat> uh, get your power back. So do not allow the person who puts you in those situations to endanger you in any way. Uh, create a long and short term plan. Um, so getting, you know, your own um, rights back and those types of things and your own life back on track. Because often, um, <clears throat> often <laughs> uh, codependency kind of comes into it as well. So codependency and enabling are pretty much siblings, you know, like they're very much related. And it does come to uh, a point of usually people who fall into the caregiving role, um, you know, have, have lacked that or they've experienced some kind of trauma or some type of incidents happened in their life where they are trying to give that back, so to speak. Um, okay, oops, go back, go back. Ah, sorry, just a second, please, Kaylee. Um, get help. Okay, so find group therapy or an Al-Anon group that can help you work through your current situation um, and follow through. So whatever plan you put in place and support system, you find yourself through, uh, follow through, whatever. <laughs> uh, can't read today. Um, anyway, so prioritize your own life, prioritize your own necessities, uh, place boundaries, like I said, and, and limits. Usually people who have been breaching your boundaries for so long need limits. And that does, because otherwise they will make you feel like the problem. They will make you feel guilty. And it does take a lot of work to get them to realize that their behaviors are their responsibility, you know, and we will leave the doors open, like I said, but we can't lift them up through everything that they're going through because if you try to help someone in a pool and they're drowning you will drown um so there's the scenario of robbing peter to pay paul um and that situation uh comes into you know are you doing that with anything in your life um so robbing Peter to pay Paul is something that my mum used to say, and I would lend money to people who I couldn't afford to lend money to. Um, and then the next week I'd be like, oh, they didn't pay it back because I didn't have an extra, you know? And, and so I'd be like, oh no, sorry, mum, I can't pay you. Now I can't pay those bills. Now I can't do those things. And are we doing that emotionally with our relationships as well? Um, Cause usually it's a list of things. It's not just one thing. Um, and, you know, that's something to really look into is, are we giving our emotional energy to other people who are not helping themselves? Um, 
and then you know not helping our own selves and our own lives and feeling drained and feeling like you know angry and and resenting these people as well because we're trying to get our needs met for validation or whatever it is that we're a good person by helping these people, but they're not taking that on board. Um, when we should be getting that validation ourselves from us, you know, we are a good person. That's why we're doing these things for us, but we're helping these people, uh, however we can, that's healthy, you know? Um, and so these are some questions I wanted you guys to ask yourself if you have realized that you're enabling someone. Uh, why are you enabling them at the risk of your own resentment, upset, or anger? Um, is it actually helping them? Uh, has their situation changed? So look at patterns. Has any of their behavior changed since you've been helping them? Uh, can you offer help another way? And are they trustworthy? So if they're in a bad spot mentally or in active addiction, can you really trust them to give them money or should you just go and get them some food or should you just refer them to a service and say, look, this service is gonna help you with free food. I can't continue helping you, you know? You've gotta be held accountable. Um, and so uh, they, they're they connected by, oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. So I was talking about codependency. So if you care too much about something or someone uh, you don't have control over, it can fall into a codependency or enabling. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a lack of respect, care or love for people who do too much for other people as well. So sometimes the enabler will actually resent you in the same way because you know, they'll, they'll feel like, oh, you know, you're always doing this for me and, and whatever else. And you're maybe the problem why I'm still doing this behavior. And there's all sorts of toxic excuses people can use. Uh, my daughter does need my attention. She's being uh, quite, uh, qu quite annoyed at the moment over the fact that I, I did tell her I was doing this video. So I'm going to address her needs right now. Um, and I appreciate you guys listening. Um, I do have more information on this, but um, I need to go and address her needs. So I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys look at different behaviors. And if you need any information Hi. or support uh, around boundaries, I can give you that information. Sorry. Okay. Goodbye.